Now the hovercraft was designed in the 1950s by the British, the same people that brought you the best looking cars of all time. The Vauxhall Astra MK2, the Austin Healy 3000, every single MGB, and the Morris Minor. Thank you all for your service. Now the idea of the modern hovercraft is most often associated with Christopher Cockerell, a British mechanical engineer. Cockerell's group was the first to develop the use of a ring of air for maintaining the cushion, the first to develop a successful skirt. They even crossed the English Channel with it just to flex on the haters. Now the hovercraft uses blowers to produce a large volume of air below the hull or an air cushion that is slightly above atmospheric pressure. The pressure difference between the higher pressure air below the hull and the lower pressure ambient air above it produces lift, which causes the hull to float above the running surface. Now for stability reasons, the air is typically blown through slots or holes around the outside of a disc or an oval shaped platform, giving most hovercraft a characteristic of a rounded rectangle shape. What you are looking at right now is the world's first hovercraft. Now fast forward, there have been many variations of hovercrafts over the years, but as soon as modern technology advanced, the hovercraft didn't really advance with it. We later found out it just wasn't practical. Why is this? Essentially, they're just not cost effective. For the most part, the amount of fuel they take and the maintenance costs combined with the lack of common comforts to the mode of travel, it just isn't a feasible method of transportation in a majority of instances. Weight and balance is a huge factor. It's riding on a cushion of air and you're lifting it over the surface. It's not a boat, which is buoyant and doesn't require much energy to just sit there, but the hovercraft does. You have to almost go full throttle to keep the thing to lift and keep it in the air. So the dream of travel by hovercraft sadly just couldn't remain afloat. Now enter the modern personal hovercraft. It hasn't changed much since the original hovercraft. It's just smaller and much more difficult to control. Control. Now, when a hovercraft's on the water, it's like a jet ski, just much slower. But when it's on land, it's like an ATV, but just much slower, but still super fun. A company named SCAT made a huge impact with the personal hovercraft and everyone started buying them for who knows what reason. Well, I know why. They're fun. You know what I want? I want a hovercraft. Why not? I want to have some fun, even though they aren't easy to control in the least bit, but you know what is easy? Make no website with Squarespace. Easy to claim a domain or URL like www.unclerichsjetpoweredhovercraftrentals.com or www.jetpoweredhovercraftrentalsbyrich.com. Now, you can create a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your web page look better than the look on people's faces when they see a flying lawnmower. Head to www.squarespace.com slash richrebuilds to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions, even if people think a jet-powered hovercraft doesn't make any sense. So I bought a hovercraft two years ago and put it at the back of my Duramax. Yes, that's how long ago I bought one when my Duramax actually ran and drove. Then I started taking it apart and it turns out it was a pile, but I kept it because I knew I wanted to make some kind of electric hovercraft, but just didn't have any friends that were willing to take it out on the water for something that I made in my basement because I sure as hell wasn't gonna drive it. So I made a brief mention in the video about this and I got an email from a subscriber saying that they wanted to buy me a hovercraft. And who am I to turn down something for free? They gave me the address where to pick it up and the seller said it ran and drove. Fun fact. On my way there, I was informed that it did not, in fact, run or drive. So now I have two hovercrafts and that don't work. And here's what you do when you have two hovercrafts that neither one of them function. Linda is trying Richard. on my um, my shoe. Big shoes to fill, but she's filling them. She's filling those shoes. Where, <laughs> where's your toe at? Wow, right at no, the tip. Look no, at that. shut up. Dude, she got some flippers. No, it's... <laughs> Linda, oh, my God. Linda wait, it's right flippers. here. Linda, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got some flippers What's on your you. shoe size? I don't know, 10, and a half, 11, something like that. He's lying. Let me see. What does it say? Six? No, never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Linda's just struggling away with every, literally everything. 
still recording? No, you're still here. Damn yeah. it. You did it. Why is this such a loser? Ow! <sighs> Richard! There you go. Watch this. You see that one? This one? I think you can do if you just do like this. I wonder if I have to... Why would you do that? God damn it. Come on, you f Oh, every time I do that one, well, I have to do that before. Oh. Okay, I'm done. What's next? Right? You did it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did it. So, Richard took his pick. That's up there, that car freshener. Oh, okay. Nina, why are you on a breath? On that note, leave that alone. I got you a gift. Nice. She's kind of cute, but she yeah. is. She's a little, 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 you know, a little, little pain in the ass. Yeah. So it's from, like easy. <laughs> it's from my merchandise. I'm doing new ones, but oh, thank you. Since I visited the shop, on I gave one to Rich. So oh, give one to that's you. so sweet. Oh, I'm gonna hang into my shop and when... and not. Oh, I'm gonna stop it right. Here. Chad, what are you doing, buddy? Trying to get this motor uh, unseized, which I did. I managed to get that cylinder unstuck. Oh, nice. But we've got a lot of rust and other... And buildup? Yeah, other buildup in here. But... You know what I'm wondering? What's going to be done quicker? You rebuilding the motor or Linda taking it out in the first place? What's going to go by quicker, you think? Uh, we already know. Don't, already don't answer know. that. We already know. Don't answer that. What you... Oh, she's still here. I want to help. Hey. What do I need to do? I need to unscrew something. I'm helping. I'm learning. That's what I did. So we got so still stuck. Yeah, there's something definitely jammed. I don't know if it's in the connecting rod. I don't know if it's something stuck somewhere. And if we force it, if it's under here, we could break things. And yeah, you don't I don't want to do that. So. Well, just in case we have a second motor behind us, <laughs> hopefully there's some good parts in that. Oh, voila! There you go. Wait. That was it. See, I would have thought I broke something. There you go. And there's nothing stuck in it. So it's in. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look, you look at that. Oh, that. Yeah, that, that won't help. Here's the question Will it still spin? The answer is no. Okay, so there's more. There's more. So, further apart we go. Best assistant ever. Absolutely. I've never seen anyone hold an engine like Linda. She's got such a yes. firm grip. I know this is sarcasm, but it means a lot. <laughs> I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> all right, so. So we got the wrist pin out. Well. It's all covered in rust. So this poor bearing, it's not really spinning. It's just kind of stuck there. That's why it looked like it was honestly one piece. Yeah, this, so this this has been sitting out in the rain. Mm. Well, we'll see if we can get this back. I, I don't know. This is looking rough. The catch is out of the middle. What's even crazier is, see how far apart we are? Huh. Wow. It's still stuck. So that bearing in the back is what's holding this. So, see these scratches? Uh -huh. And this big chunk down here? Uh -huh. That's all bad. So what it is is the piston and the rings are damaged and it's scraping the cylinder wall so I can't, it can't seal properly. Uh -huh. That's why we have low compression in this one. Question is, can we take the parts from this one and put it in this one? So, so, looking at how bad that other one was, yeah, and how rusty this is, uh huh. The answer is probably no. Dang. So, when Rich gets back, we have to tell him. I'll think of something by then. Okay. I hope. Because I don't want him being an angry little grouch. Well, there's no helping that. <laughs> All right. So, what the heck? Yeah, so this is the one that actually rotated, and this mm -hmm. one was seized. I see a difference, uh, you know? Yeah. This one looks like a Wolverine came over here. <laughs> this one is uh, just a little little rusty. Dang. So I think we can make a good one out of these two bad ones.
Just kidding, wrong cylinder head. Okay. Good trial. You did good. Well, that was one. I know it's the wrong one. Oh, because you left the, okay, gotcha. That's the one with the bad bore in it. Gotcha. Linda put them in the wrong spot. Oh, Linda. Isn't this the worst design that you've seen in a long time? This is awful. This, this is, is this is awful. This, I, is, I, this is this is a nightmare. So the designer should have been shot. After, I think he was <laughs> by yeah. one of his employees. But basically, right in here, you have to stick your hand in that tiny little dark hole, right? And in that hole is all the steering linkage. So you think to yourself, no big deal. I'm just gonna remove, I spent like 15 minutes removing this disgusting cap off the top, thinking I could unscrew that yep. and, and remove this false floor. That is not a false floor. It's they, a pocket. It's a pocket. They molded it into the fiberglass body. That can't be removed. So everything Chad has to do with his tiny little fingers, which they're not. <laughs> My little biscuit grippers. Little biscuit grippers, you have to do through that hole. Yeah. So the goal is we have to replace uh, oh. the steering cable. Which is stuck down in the stupid stuck bracket. There, and the steering cable goes through. It's the only, Chad, fun fact, that's the only cable that goes in the hovercraft. Oh, the, fantastic. The fuel is right next to your foot. Yeah, I know, it's like, the wait a minute, we have all these, we have the all these The throttle is right next to you, the motor hours are right there, but that one steering cable is the one that goes through the actual Why? hull of the hovercraft. Why? I don't know who the hell did that. But the reasoning is, is uh, the end of this broke. If I could even find it, this broke right here, the end of that. And the only way to fix that is to remove it from the other hovercraft, because you know what? We have to do this twice. <laughs> but actually we don't, you know why? I have a friend here. <laughs> can't be stuck if it's open. You can't be serious. So, Rich, is this how we remove cables? This is how we remove. Look at this. Look at this cable. Very simple cable system. But because I'm too lazy to undo these and stick my hand on the other side, I'm just going to use this instead. Yeah. What, what are tools for, anyway? Right. <laughs> vibrate a lot. Why am I on this? I don't know, you want you got in. She pumps some more fuel into it.
or experts at really anything. The plan is, because we have uh, extra blades, we're gonna add additional blades to this. And some of the commentary from actual experts said that uh, it will lose efficiency, it will gain a little bit more thrust, but we're gonna lose efficiency because of the additional blades, the motor will be more taxed, we're gonna get terrible gas mileage, but we don't care. We just want thrust at this point. It's all uh, about that thrust. We have to make sure, there's no, these don't lock into place, unfortunately, so we have to make sure the new ones have the same angle that the old ones did. And uh, John, thankfully, carefully marked these off to make sure that the angle is right. So we're just hoping that this all works out. It probably won't. And we'll be doing this over again in about 15 minutes. So we'll see what happens. All right. Now for the real test to see how much quicker, harder accelerating, et cetera, this thing is. Oh, Matt, what's up, man? You got here fast. I have a question for you, man. Yeah. I need your help with something. I have this hovercraft right here. I want to make it faster. So we got everything going. We put an additional six fan blades in it. Uh, the thrust is a little bit oh, better. Yeah, it does have more fan blades. The, the bag inflates a little bit quicker, but I think I still need a little bit more power. Any recommendations? Is this the one that just showed up? Yes. Out of nowhere? Pretty much, yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> it looks good. Let's check it out it real looks quick. looks legit. It says five pounds right now. I'm yeah, gonna. Good All right, three Ready? pounds. Go for it. Matt, 55. Oh man, 55. 55. Dude, that's amazing. We're gonna put 200, 220 to 250 pounds of thrust. And it's only 55 from factory, that's so weak. 55 from factory, yeah. That's so weak. What's going on, Scat? Well, 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 this this was back in the 80s. <laughs> this was back in the 80s. You know, they, they, had the they, they didn't have thrust back then. <laughs> they even have planes back then? One of those rivets even came off just from me pushing it with my hand without even hitting the uh, air chisel. I thought this was the night I was going to get sleep, bitch. So that's how you know quality work's going to be done with no sleep, quality. Trying to get that off. All right, John Ross. You had such a great buying experience for me with the i8. That's right. And he decided to do it yet again. He is buying the tow truck. You're buying this from a black owned and operated business. <laughs> Why is that funny? I like to support small business. I, <laughs> it's not, it's not, I, no laughing matter. No laughing it's not, fun, it's not funny. And I just want to have this on video. I do not recommend you driving this to Kansas. The you most- texted me that too the, before I left. The most this has been driven is maybe like an hour here, maybe three or four hours tops. Going to Kansas, that's a long way. So just to let you know what I've done so far in terms of maintenance. Uh -huh. um, there's stop leak everywhere. Okay. okay, I was I figured that's more than what I expected, which was no. Nah. Yeah. I'm not being petty. It just wasn't in the ad. It just wasn't included. I, I'm sorry, man. Those. Hey, man. There's way too much junk in the tow truck, and I need to get the weight down, or I'm gonna end up with seven miles a gallon on the way home. Let me tell you something right now. Your piece of advice, okay? Okay. I'm gonna send you all these boxes that you have in there. Yeah. And I'm gonna use. Ship station. You ever hear of them? I have. It's the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In a few clicks, you're managing orders like a boss. boss. 
you're printing out discounted shipping labels like a boss, boss. and you're getting your products out like a boss. boss. And the product in this case is a, it's the it's fuel the fuel level sender, the, all these straps, the fuel level sender. So you're not doing this now in the in the parking lot, right? Because yeah. there's no working on cars in the parking lot. Oh, I didn't know that was a rule. I was going to try to do it, but. Yeah, no, you, you actually have to leave. ShipStation, it works with all of the major carriers, USPS, FedEx, UPS, and even international. Matter of fact, that has a USPS label on it right now, as a it matter does. of fact. And you can compare and choose the best shipping solution every time, and they offer discounts on shipping costs. And you can access the same postage and discounts that they usually reserve for Fortune 500 companies. And guess what? We are, we are not a Fortune... 500 or even 100 anything here. Yeah, I'm okay. glad I'm glad this will save you a little bit of money. A little bit of money. Well, yes, it'll save me money, but I'm actually going to send you the invoice for it. Oh. So. Go to shipstation.com slash Rich Rebuilds for your free 60-day trial. For selling or shipping whatever thing that you have to your friends for products that probably will not work. And, um, yeah, so make ship happen. You yeah. hear that? Make, what a great, I actually came up with that, by the way, if you didn't know that. Did you? Yeah, I did. Both. John uh, covered all this up, cut a perfect piece to fit into that duct, and all we have left now is the bleed duct on the bottom. So we should have a lot more air going to those skirts, and should be, should float a lot better. I mean, this thing's already terrifying to drive, and uh, I think it's going to be even more sensitive and more terrifying with more lift. But uh, you know, that's what fun's about. <laughs> a couple of two by fours here, some two by fours out, some drywall screws to hold the jet engine. Rich rebuild style, 100% right here, that's perfect. <laughs> Sophia has all the jet engines all set up here on the couch. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is mount one jet engine on each rudder, connect those together, all the wiring pumps, fill this thing up with fuel and get it fired up. Hit it, move it. Oh yeah, there you go. That looks like fun to me. Okay. Hey Rich, you know what? What? This is literally double the price of race fuel. Yeah. Race feels like yeah. what? Nine dollars a gallon. This it is eighteen is. bucks a gallon. But it's because you went to Home Depot. That's the problem. What yeah. is it, Rich? Well, it is. It is Easter Sunday. Only Home Depot was open. That's true. That's all we got. All we got is clean heat. And do we have any more? All right. Unfortunately, we don't have turbine oil, but this is the first time I'm improvising. I'm using fully synthetic 10W30. I want to make sure Rich has fun as soon as possible. So we're not going to wait for turbine oil. Like we're using kerosene from Home Depot, clean heat, motor oil, and they're probably people like are maple gonna, syrup. Looks like maple syrup. Go ahead, it. I don't know it's if it's good. gonna be smooth. Oh, oh. Looks like maple syrup. Eat a funnel. Oh, oh you're good. You're a pro. You've done this before. Hopefully it works. for a rodeo. Daddy's funny. He's like, this is maple syrup. <laughs> it looks like maple syrup. That's what you put on your pancakes. <laughs> How are you feeling? You're, 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 you're an engineering student, right? <laughs> How do you feel about this? You, you, uh, it should be interesting. It's not an answer on a test. <laughs> so a little director's cut for you. I'm editing the video at the moment. And uh, from this scene of the seven people that were in this shop, not a single person told me that my fly was down right here. So uh, thank you guys very much. And please direct your eyes upward. Thank you. Starting the fan. Yes. Um, that's probably going to be most of the issue. Yep. And then um, just making sure the controls are ready right. and then firing them up. And then following that, running out of fuel. And so we don't have, remember we were playing all, all night last night with it? Yeah. 
we, um, we don't have that, that much. Also, blood. the skid is a little rough right now. Okay. Um, so there's a couple issues. There's a couple. Okay. We're there's a couple areas. Uh, what about the weight? Do you um, think that's going to be a problem? Because we're adding a battery. We're adding an additional gallon of fuel. Uh, probably need more, a little more weight on we'll this side. We'll more. just like yeah, just shift forward, more just lean over it. Man, all right. Yeah. I love this. So this is your mode switch right here. Yep. So that stop is all the way down. Middle is ready. And then if you want to ignite the engine, just start the ignition sequence. Yep. You go up, then in the middle, and then the engines will automatically start and come to idle. Okay. And then if anything happens, I'm going to give you two shutoffs in the back. A okay. Full shutoff. And you just shut that off. If anything, like if it gets stuck full throttle, right. you hit the switch. Right. The wires get the, who knows, right? That's your that's your second fail. That's your second safety. Right. Your first safety is this. So if anything happens, you just boom right just there. Kill stop. It. Gotcha. Done. Yeah. The engine's off. And uh, second safety, there's going to be a fuel cutoff on the fuel line. Yep. And then you just shut that Twist ball it. valve. Or just pull it out of the. Uh, yeah. Or, the, or the pull jug. it out of there. Right. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. whatever uh, we're probably going to set up a little bit more semi-permanent maybe we'll put some wood around that too some more two by fours around I, got, it. I have more gorilla tape actually okay the other way oh yeah go 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 turn it all right you got it
awesome. Right, so right now, Joey, uh, myself, and Matt, we're gonna switch to um, to diesel because diesel's a lot cheaper. We've been using kerosene, and uh, finding kerosene on the East Coast has proven very difficult. So we're gonna switch to diesel instead. Matt says it has uh, better lubrication than kerosene. And it's also a lot cheaper, which is my main goal. It's about a third the price. So uh, we could actually siphon diesel from other trucks that we see on the street. A lot easier to run on this. But there's a learning procedure as well that we have to go through that Matt's gonna show us uh, on how to train the system to, to run on diesel instead of kerosene. I didn't know it was this yellow. Did you know that? I knew that. Watch it not even be diesel, it's just like yeah. urine. Oh. It's like cat pee. It's just gas. This is gas. <laughs> just gas. Who does that? How do you say it? Right? Very yellow. It is very yellow. It's two gallons, right? So 16 ounces. And if you want to figure out the I don't know if you have a calculator, just do uh just do whatever, 128 ounces per gallon. Yeah, and then the 5% from that. Multiply by 0 0.05. So is it 5% is, is, is for diesel? 10% so for kerosene? I believe it's 3% for diesel, 5% for kerosene. But I always put 5%. Just, okay. Diesel, yeah, just to cover it. 5%, I, or okay, I put it even more. a little extra sometimes. Okay. Turbine oil, you don't really have to worry, but if you're using another oil, then I, I would, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. I've never used motor oil. This is the first okay. time. All right, well, it works, apparently. But I know how to rebuild them, so, and right. I have bearings. Oh, so so that's mostly what goes bad if the, you don't use the right oil. Gotcha. What's up, man? So by the way, Rich. Yep. I also included a voltage meter. Yes. For the input that's voltage. That's for. Okay. Yeah, the input voltage coming from the battery. Mm -hmm. So that way you can just at a glance you can I see can how much the power the battery has. Right. And then this is the output voltage to the computer here. But why do we need such a strong battery for this setup? Yeah, because it pulls a lot of amps when they start. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. they're pulling like eight or nine amps a piece when they start. Okay. So. 20 amps, so if you put even a little light pole, it might be too much voltage drop. Gotcha. And if the computers are very sensitive, so once it gets that voltage drop, it'll just air It's not out. freaking out, okay. Yeah, so. so that's what I'll do, so yeah, I think. Yeah, you know your voltage right there. Yeah, so, so once, we, once we pull it in for the night, I'm gonna put a trickle charger on that battery yeah. just in case. Mm -hmm. We hit, okay, yeah. test fuel pump, okay, yeah. and hold it down. And then look, at the, look for the air in the lines, guys. So yep, it's, it's priming, it's priming. There's still air, there's still air. Yep, now it's now clear. Now it's clear. Okay. Somebody steering in the front. Yeah. Actually, okay. hang on. Can we put this here. <laughs> Get my breath. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm holding it up. Watch me fall down. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Matt, this is a lot crazier than I thought it was gonna be, man. <laughs> Thank you very, very much for coming out here. Ever since we met up and we, uh, you did the, uh, the jet-powered Tesla. I knew we were going to do something else together. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this. You yeah, I'm actually really power. glad that it worked out as good as it did. I didn't think it was going to be that fast. It was and, amazing. And, right? and you know what's interesting is that when I first rode this here, I, now I drove a hovercraft only two times in my life, mm -hmm. and it was terrifying. To, it was terrifying to pilot. Right. But 
for some reason with these jet engines, I think like you said, it's very directional thrust. Yes. It's it's actually, it turns and it responds. It actually so turns on a dime. You yeah. could just do a 360 like you were doing in the middle of the street. Yeah, like the donuts. Yeah, you're doing the donuts because- <laughs> But it was so, it's so responsive now. Yes, it versus is. Versus like, it feel, the other one felt like, with the fan, it felt like a boat. It yeah. was like, oh. You were just throwing air everywhere, yeah. You had to like, you know? you know, turn and then correct yourself. This was awesome, because the second you turn that wheel, you know, they both go in the same direction, whereas the fan, it just kind of blows it everywhere. But this is, dude, what a, what a night. And it's out of wood, too. Thank you for simulating my video style and making out of wood and not carbon fiber, titanium, well, aluminum, and uranium. I, I think you it's your use. style to, to nickname this the, do, the, the, what is it? What did I say? The Spruce Deuce. The Spruce Deuce. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to nickname it for you, Spruce Deuce. It's the Spruce Deuce. Deuce. I like it. The Spruce Deuce. 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 I Just like for it. you. Spruce Deuce. I love it. Thank it you very much, man. It's quite fitting. Cool, man. Thank you. John Ross. Godspeed, man. You got the tranny fluid. Uh, I'm going to send all your stuff using ship station, like I said before. Yeah. Jess, good luck to you. I'm putting Just on my safety device here. Put on your safety belt. This is uh, actually a, an air spring seat. It is. So you're gonna be really comfy, like a big bus driver. Actually, it's a big wheel. Yeah. You'll big, be all right. Uh, oh yeah, I have to steer it like this though, right? As yeah, I go with, through with the your finger. Full if, speed. if you have a hard time steering, it needs more power steering fluid. Okay. So pull over, buy a jug of that, but just, you know, all the best, buddy. Did you see me hit that bump a minute ago? I tried to get some air for you. I did, I saw that, I saw that. But again, remember, this is yours. If you break it, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Later, man. Later. <laughs> All right, here's the update on the Hellcat. Matt, we put new wheels and tires on the Hellcat, so when you come back, you could blow the rubber off of those too. Uh, but this is the old wheel. This thing is still holding air, and it looks like an actual wire brush went through this. Look at these flakes of rubber. Uh, it held up really, really well. Uh, the hovercraft, on the other hand, we learned a couple things. I was very excited to put six additional blades on the fan. Unfortunately, the motor couldn't keep up with all the air pressure going into the hovercraft. What ended up happening was the belt ended up slipping off of this shaft, shredded the whole thing and the fan stopped working. So we went back to only having six fan blades and we're gonna try it again. Maybe in a separate video, not really sure if this is gonna be well received or not, but we're gonna try it again if we can. Um, one major thing we have to figure out is fuel consumption. This consumes an insane amount of fuel. This uh, one gallon jug will get sucked down in exactly one minute. So both turbines at full thrust, this will be gone in one minute. Uh, unfortunately, this is kerosene. So it actually costs about $17 an hour where we are, sorry, $17 a gallon where we are. So this is incredibly expensive to run. It's about $20 a minute. Uh, we got a two gallon jug. That was a little bit more helpful. It gave us two minutes. Uh, we wanna start doing some more balancing because uh, the weight of the battery uh, is on one side, we wanna have the jug at least on the other side or at least a custom one taking up the front of the hovercraft because as we were riding it, we had to put a lot of frontward weight on the front to keep it from lifting off the ground. Also, speaking of off the ground, the skirt is not doing so well. This was a brand new skirt. In order to stop this thing because it was going so fast, you have to ease off the throttle of the hovercraft and drop the entire thing on the ground. When it's dropped on the ground, the asphalt just tears this thing up in general. But overall, awesome experience. Uh, we had a great time making this thing. Uh, thank you, Matt, for coming down and, and allowing us to, to use uh, these babies of yours. Definitely want to get my own, but this is too much fun, man. Either way, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you all next week. One more editor's note, guys, before I say goodbye. I wanted to mention that we were not at full throttle for any of these runs. This hovercraft is capable of achieving much much higher speeds. There is very little friction. This thing probably could have gone 75 miles an hour if we weren't careful. Uh, there are too many people and property around. If you're anything less than 10 feet uh, behind this hovercraft, you will suffer third degree burns. So we want to take this to an actual open field to give this thing a true actual test. But either way, I thought I'd throw in that quick side note and I will see you guys in two weeks.